All right, let's talk briefly about cholesterol in the context of a carnivorous diet. Now, many of you guys will go on a ketogenic, low-carb, carnivorous diet, a diet that contains a little more fat, and you'll get um, your blood cholesterol results back, or your blood lipid results back, and, and a lot of people often become disconcerted by the fact that their LDL cholesterol may rise, or their total cholesterol may rise, and that often will be met with uh, the advice from a physician to stop the diet, perhaps get on a, a statin drug, and people, despite the fact that often they feel very good, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they have numerous improvements in their health. Some people even say the best they've ever felt, uh, particularly with a carnivorous diet, and you know, because of these you know, one or two lab values, they, they, they decide to, to step away from that. And I think when we look at uh, things from a just an overall does this pass a common sense test perspective if you go on a diet and your joints get better your mood gets better your libido gets better your skin gets better your uh, digestion gets better your energy gets better every single clinically relevant condition to you gets better and one lab goes the wrong way and this is often or quote unquote the wrong, the wrong way, this is often what we see. Those people will abandon that because they fear uh, motorcycle. They fear that now they're at greater risk for heart disease. And what I will sh tell you is the data concerning cholesterol and heart disease has never been particularly good and, and in particular recent years the, the data is even getting less compelling you know the risk associational risks for that are very small generally um, you know some of the epidemiology study was based upon uh, confounded stuff some of the more recent data out there shows that uh, uh, different diets um, are uh, you know, not bearing out to what we used to think. And so, the other thing is we see is that uh, the uh, number of people, you know, if we look at some of the risk factors for heart disease, abdominal obesity, hyperinsulinemia, elevated inflammatory markers, those things are, are probably much more likely to show up as clinical heart disease down the, down the road. Also, triglycerides and HDL ratios. You know, your triglycerides over your your uh, uh, HDL is, is a particularly good marker, um, or a better marker. Now, the other thing you need to know is, is, is so if you're looking at the whole big picture, you know, you can't just rely on just total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. It's 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 a very poor marker for disease. But the other thing that's important to know is your cholesterol, whether it's total or LDL cholesterol is highly, highly variable day to day. Uh, there is a very interesting fellow, an engineer by the name of Dave Feldman at cholesterolcode.com who is demonstrating that, uh, you know, you can change your cholesterol 30, 40 percent, you know, 100 points in, in a matter of a few days. And so, you know, the, the fact that we rely on those numbers, you know, people, a lot of times what happens is a lot of people lose weight on these diets. And so what happens is they're, they're, uh, liver gets more active in secreting uh, fats because we're trying to replenish the, the fat that we're losing and our cholesterol just goes up to, to reflect that and so it's not necessarily um, a, a bad thing or a problematic thing we need cholesterol for survival cholesterol is vital to our structure and our function without it we get sick the people that emphasize reducing cholesterol cutting cholesterol manipulating with drugs those people often get worse clinically. I mean, that's clear. And so I think that uh, this is something you have to keep in mind. Uh, you know, go do further research on this stuff. Unfortunately, mess, most physicians aren't aware of this stuff. They're, they, they're in a paradigm that's 30 years old and don't realize that. Look at your inflammatory markers. Look at your level of insulin resistance. Um, you know, if you want to look at some blood lipids, look at... Uh, triglycerides and your HDL numbers, look at those ratios. Those are, have higher, far higher bearing on, you know, what actually, you know, is going to put you at risk. Look at your waist to height ratio. You know, 
an, uh, a all meat or carnivorous diet generally results in low levels of inflammation, improve HDL to triglyceride ratios, um, low levels of insulin, reduced weight, waste, uh, you know, abdominal obesity, uh, and then a whole host of other positive health markers. And so, you know, we have to at some point have to say, wait a minute, everything's good except this one lab value. Maybe there's a problem with that lab value. And I think that's that's what we see. And, and there's too many people that, you know, they, they've been entrenched in this dogma. There's some financial incentive to, to keep that, that stuff going. And so it's harming people. So think about that. All right. Enjoy steak. Talk to you later.